We felt like our family was totally violated by the Sheriff's Department and we felt ultimately betrayed by the school district. If the teachers start sicken undercover operators onto their students, that trust is gone and so is the school. It's not the drugs that are harmful anymore. It's the war on drugs that's so harmful. Temecula is a city in Riverside County, California, with a population of about 100,000 people. It's consistently ranked in the top five safest cities in the U.S., according to Business Insider. Doug and Catherine Snodgrass had no worries about raising their four children in the area, particularly their teenage son, who's an autistic high school student. He also has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, Tourette syndrome, um, several anxiety disorders, and um, every day is a challenge for him, but he's a, a beautiful boy. Their son's list of disabilities have many in the community wondering why he was targeted last December in an undercover drug operation. Their son, who wished to remain unnamed, began attending a new high school in the Temecula Valley Unified School District last fall at the start of his senior year. He rarely made friends, so his parents were thrilled when he told them that he had made a new friend on his first day of school. He told me that he met a new friend in art class, and I was completely amazed by that. It seemed like uh, they were having these great conversations back and forth, or what seemed typical for a teenager, because there was such a furious amount of texting going on. But those texts weren't just friendly teenage banter. Instead, their son's new friend was pressuring him to buy marijuana. And this new friend wasn't just a teenager, he was an undercover cop who went by the name of Daniel Briggs. He said that he was having a lot of trouble with his family and that he was under a lot of stress and he needed something to make him feel better and he just couldn't cope. So our son said, you know, I was worried about the guy. Daniel gave him $20 and our son said he would find a way to get him some pot. It took the Snodgrass's son three weeks to buy half a joint of pot off a homeless man. This process was repeated a second time. When Daniel asked a third time, their son refused. After that, Daniel stopped communicating with him altogether which our son seems pretty broken up about. And he was back to, back to zero friends, so he was alone again, and it really hurt him. A few weeks later, armed policemen walked into his classroom and arrested him in front of his peers. His parents were not notified of the arrest at the time. He was taken to a juvenile facility for 48 hours. 22 students were arrested in the drug sting. Most of them were special needs students, causing police tactics to come into question. Our current policy for dealing with this stuff is, is a, a, a complete failure. We need to rethink our policy. All we're doing is using the hammer and we're creating new nails like these children here. Stephen Downing spent 20 years on the force with the Los Angeles Police Department, located two counties northwest of Riverside. The LAPD pioneered drug busts in high schools in 1974. The Los Angeles School District General Counsel launched a review into the undercover program in 2004. The review found no evidence that the program reduced the amount of drugs on school grounds. However, there was evidence of an increase in arrests of special education students. The LAPD disbanded the program in 2005 after the review concluded that it had failed to catch serious drug offenders. In this case, there was no crime until the kid had been talked into going out on the street and finding something, and he did it to keep his friendship with somebody. Um, that's a sting. That's a nasty, degrading sting. A Department of Justice report likewise concluded that sting operations in general do nothing to solve long-term crime and that they may prevent the use of other, more effective problem-solving techniques. It can be economically difficult for police units to disband undercover operations in high schools despite questionable results. Every arrest they make it goes on the quota wheel. It's, it's, it's another notch on the quota wheel. It helps them get federal grants. It helps them get equipment, it helps them get SWAT teams built up, it helps them participate in, in task forces that pays overtime, it helps them get uh, asset sharing that brings millions of dollars into their departments that are basically uh, a police-led uh, slush funds. And so there are too many incentives in the drug war for them to say anything other than Gee, we made a big bust at the so-and-so high school and we arrested 23 kids for dealing dope. 
big bad dope dealers. One in 200 youths were arrested on drug-related charges in 2010, according to the Department of Justice. Policy experts say that those who get caught up in the legal system as a juvenile are less likely to become upstanding citizens later in life. I know kids get into trouble and with drugs, and those kids that most times successfully escape that trouble, escape it without the benefit of the criminal justice system or their school. They escape it by concerned parents uh, seeking out the best uh, uh, solutions. The Snodgrasses took their case to court and their son was found not guilty in exchange for 20 hours of community service. He eventually returned to school in March through a court order. The Temecula Valley Unified School District is still fighting to expel him due to their zero tolerance policy when it comes to drugs. The Snodgrasses have sued the school district for unspecified damages. They claim the school officials should have protected their son instead of working with the police to manipulate him. The sting operation caused their son severe anxiety and emotional distress. He just totally lost trust in, in everybody and barricaded himself in his room he didn't want to go anywhere. He didn't want to see anybody. His anxiety went through the roof. And at this point, he's being treated for post-traumatic stress disorder. We don't ever want to see another child or family have to go through what our son went through. And it's really barbaric to have these type of operations where they bring in cops to act like kids, to ultimately get kids who aren't drug dealers, but they teach them to go find drugs and have them bring them onto campus so that they can get a cell and make an arrest. And how does that get rid of the real drug dealers? It doesn't. It basically, um, this experience uh, taught our son how to sell drugs. And that's not why we sent him to school.